all trying to see the good in everybody. And this movie is about redemption and nobody's beyond that if they're willing to do the work, if they honestly and sincerely repent and, and you know, want to go and do the work to turn their lives around, you know, but God knows your heart. God loves us and he loves everybody he's created and his whole sh shtick um, is to bring all of humankind back to the to Bet Av, the Father's house. When did your faith become real for you? Because it's obvious you wouldn't make a film like this if it wasn't important to you. Well, it's been very real for me from a very early age. I mean, I do accredit all of my personal and professional success to my faith. Now, that being said, um, you know, like a lot of people, you get to trouble, you turn to God, and please help me, and this will never happen again. But when I started doing good things, good things started happening for me. And I'm a man of routine. You know, people always give me a hard time about my schedule, but that's what keeps me centered. And it's at the, you know, the base of that is that in my prayer time and my scripture reading, and, and then, you know, of course, you know, working out and, and I feel like I can conquer the world until I go and wake up my teenagers. And then I realize I need lots of help. But, uh, but yeah, I think I've always felt like I wanted to do more with the talents and gifts that were given me for the greater good and for, to fulfill God's purpose. You know, he put me in this position for a reason and it's not to just keep making, you know, comedies that sometimes work and sometimes yeah. don't. And so uh, when this came to me, I really felt like it was, uh, it was meant to be. There are a lot of people that say they're Christians, but you'd never know it from their work. So I guess my question is, what, at what point, first of all, at what point in your life as an adult, did it become really serious? So you talk about scripture reading, whatever, you know, there's a lot of well, people that say, I believe in God, but well, that's I mean, serious. Gosh, becoming a dad, you know, okay. becoming a dad, becoming a husband, uh, and, you know, the older you get, the more serious it, it, it gets, right? And that being said, now I don't make a decision based on whether I'm going to do something and compromise my artistic integrity just because of my faith. You know, I've always hoped that God is a movie fan. I've made movies that are about uh, tougher subjects that, um, you know, that that have uh, have been things that I wanted to do and challenge myself as an actor. So but I definitely am committed to and looking forward to doing more faith based content and more stuff that just has substance and, and helps people. At some point in the past, I know that you reached out to some people to make amends. You, you know, you had altercations when you were young and stuff. But, you know, that's a big deal. A lot of people just don't. They just let it go. And what I'm saying is it still seems to me like at some point something happened where Jesus comes into your life in a new way. Because, I mean, I, I had faith as a kid, but it wasn't until my 20s that something happened. Was it, was it like that for you or was it more gradual? It was more gradual. It just it just seems like I, everything is directly connected to my faith. So, you know, what I'm doing professionally, what I'm doing personally, what how I want to grow uh, as 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 a man, how I want to be an example as a father, you know, the kind of husband that I want to be, all those things. So, you know, it's just it's renewed every day. It starts with expressing my gratitude and then kind of asking for my marching orders and what what can I do to, you know, do my part. Was it fun working with Mel Gibson? We probably had more fun on Daddy's Home, but we had 30 days to shoot this movie. The great thing about this film was every single actor, whether it was Mel or Malcolm McDowell or Jackie Weaver or Teresa Ruiz or all the rest of the wonderful cast that we had, everybody wanted to be part of telling Father Stu's story, which is a unique thing. You don't get it that often where people are attracted to a movie that basically doesn't have anything to offer you other than being a part of something that could be special. You know, it's it, it was not a paying gig for sure. Uh, I was I was financing the movie myself, so I had to, uh, you know, I had to manage the budget. But but people really wanted to be a part of it and telling the story and being part of the vision. And and so you know that's a, a unique experience when when something comes together like that. And of course now the powers that be at work. Um, this movie's been blessed for a very long time. Well, I still want to maybe because you're in the Hollywood world. I'm not. I live here in Manhattan. It's such a rare uh, and happy and encouraging thing to see A-list stars putting their faith out there. It's a big deal. And I guess it probably comes with a, with a price, but uh, you know, people are rooting for, for folks like you to live out your faith. So that's a, a long way of saying thank you. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's one of the only ways to really bring people together. Right. We're all trying to see the good in everybody. And this movie is about redemption and nobody's beyond that if they're willing to do the work, if they honestly and sincerely repent and and, you know, want to go and do the work to turn their lives around. You know, but God knows your heart. 
So there's no fooling God. Correct. I got to ask you, you mentioned your workout routine. I was jealous uh, of, of your guns when you took your shirt off in the baptism thing. I said, this guy's really still working hard. Uh, what, is he, what is your workout? Will you share what is your workout routine? Uh, today, I just, I just squeezed it in. I mean, I'm traveling, promoting the movie. I've never worked so hard to kind of get the word out there about a film. But, um, you know, I usually like to get in there, you know, three, four in the morning, get it done right after my prayer time. But I go to bed. If I get up at three, I go to bed at seven. I like my sleep eight hours. That's rest, rest and recovery is just as important. That is amazing. How do you get to bed that early? That's astonishing. I say good night to my wife and my kids, and I say, yeah, you can tear tear it up downstairs. Just be quiet upstairs. I got to get up, and then I'm waking them up in the morning, so they say good night to me, you know, and uh, they're, they're the last faces I see, and then I'm the first face they see in the morning. You you've always been ambitious. Uh, have have you always been disciplined? I mean, it seems kind of, it's just amazing from a, to me. From a very early age, I have been disciplined. You know, when somebody actually was willing to take a chance on me, give me a job, give me an opportunity, I took that very seriously. And, you know, I always prided myself on making sure that I could over deliver for people who would bet on me. Is that what attracted to you to the character of Father Stu? Because he seems like the, the maniac who will not take no for an answer. He's just going to do whatever he needs to do. I mean, is there a little bit of you in that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think uh, lots of me and Stu, and, you know, I've been preparing for, you know, a majority of my life to play this part in many respects. Yeah. I said it earlier, Hollywood doesn't talk a lot about Jesus, but most people in America talk about Jesus. And uh, you have not shrunk from that. Do you have other projects, faith-based projects uh, lined up or not yet? I have other stuff that would kind of fall under the aspirational, inspirational, you know, faith-based um, title. But I'm hoping that this project will not only f for projects for myself, but other people, young filmmakers, talent, people that have stories that they want to tell, that they maybe want to be the face of, that I can help get them made as well. So yes, in uh, in Successive Stu, we're hoping to uh, really start a faith-based component and, and, and do lots of meaningful stuff, both film, television, long form, short form content. So final question, are there any heroes in the faith that uh, inspire you in particular? Yes, the unsung heroes, the ones that are in, the, you know, in the field, on the street, beating the pavement every day, just reaching out to people, letting them know they're there. Uh, I've been so fortunate. You know, God puts people in your life at the right time for a reason. And I've met so many people and they are, they're the reason why I'm here today. So it's the unsung heroes that are, that are in the communities, in the churches, in the schools, in the boys and girls clubs. Yeah. All right. You're a good man, Mark. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. God bless you. Mr. Pay My Taxes. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. You get a job on Days of Our Lives. Yep. So you are, quote unquote, a secular actor, but you're still very much walking with the Lord. Yeah, very much so. And and that's what sort of this book is about. All of the conversations that I have had through the years, uh, several of them I shared in my last book, which is called It's Never Too Late. My literary agent here in New York a person very different from myself. He's a man, one, number one. He's a male. He's Asian. He's gay, and he was raised a Buddhist. But he's a fantastic guy, and I love him. And he told me that what he liked the most about the last book that we had all done together were the stories of like when I shared Jesus with Craig Ferguson on a set and on a movie that I wrote for yeah, the two I wanna, of us. I want to talk to you about Th this kind of stuff. So we're going there, folks. But yeah, so that's keep going. what it, that's and or Kevin Costner, or I tell that story in this one. And he said, Kathy, because you know, you've had a different kind of life experience because of the world that you have made your living in. Right. But I was exactly where I was supposed to be. And as a result, every time I had an opportunity to share Jesus or or a scripture or anything, any moment that the Holy Spirit would would give me in my own spirit, I'd know, say it. Say it in love, say it in tenderness, say it in humor, you know, say it in a way that will not speak gently and tenderly to people and make them laugh too, if you can, and they will take notice. And I probably, and I thank Billy with all my heart for this because he became a very dear friend. I have probably reached millions and millions and millions of people with the gospel. That's, I'm not saying that like, yay me. I'm saying that's because I'm fulfilling my purpose. And, and if we make everybody go to be cookie cuttered and, and, and do the same mission and work, 
you know, that's not, Jesus said, go, go, go into all corners of the earth and tell everybody. And, you know, and, and so I'm just, that's my corner of the earth. What's interesting to me about that is that it takes courage um, and it takes actual faith because you do get pushback from people oh, as you have over the years. I just did the so, Today Show this morning. I'm getting all kinds of pushback about something. I don't care. Really? Yes, it doesn't matter. Are I they still on the air? Yes, I know that for a fact because really? I did the eight o'clock really? and the ten o'clock today. Yes, okay, good. And it's good. full of really, really a lot of great people over there. Okay, in the book, the Jesus I know, you relate conversations that you've had, and this is important, Kathy, because I when again when I'm with you, I joke around so much, but this is at the very heart of everything. How do you talk to people about ultimate issues, the thing that has changed your life and changed my life, when they're not on the same Page. So how has that worked out for you? Because being in show business, you've bumped into tons of people, some of whom would be openly hostile, others would be curious, mystified. First of all, I pray before I do any project and I say, Lord, whoever you want me to be with, whoever you want me to meet or talk to, show me. And then let my the Holy Spirit communicate in, in my inner woman, my inner spirit, uh, what you want me to say. You know, said, don't worry about what you'll say. Right. The, the, the Lord will give you utterance. So I, I usually, and this is, happens quite a bit. I don't say anything. People just start to talk to me. They'll start to talk to me and they'll ask a question. And uh, that has happened more and more and more as people know that that's where I'm coming from. They don't run from it. I mean, it's just, it, why don't, why are we afraid? Why are we afraid to proclaim our Lord and, and, and let people see us vulnerable and real and I'm not I perfect, but, I, but, yeah. uh, but I love a perfect God and he loves me anyway, and he and he tells me that he wants me to love people that are also not not perfect. This is crazy talk. Listen, yeah. uh, you know I'm with you, and I love it. So, what led you to write a book with the title "The Jesus I Know"? In other words, what do you mean "The Jesus I Know"? And then, why honest conversations and diverse opinions about who he is? What do you mean? Because in my in the course of my life, I've discovered that most everybody has a concept of Jesus, and very few people are repelled by him or revolted by him, unless there's some sort of um, satanic influence. But, but people that are not, you know, challenged in that way, even the demons recognized him. He, you know, he's a force to be reckoned with. And I find that fascinating. I like to find out from people, what is your concept of him? Or when did you first hear about him? And what did you think? And, and do you even believe he was a, a historical figure, not just a, you know, because uh, they, they've been trying for years to say David never was existed, Solomon never existed, you know, and now they're finding all kinds of things uh, in Israel, you know, confirming that, 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 that the scripture is You know, I've true. just written a book about this. I've got a copy for you in the other room. Oh, good. I'm not even kidding. Like, no. it is, the evidence is insane. You cannot, insane. You cannot ignore insane. it. That's called willful ignorance when you just ignore that kind of in, that kind of uh, evidence. That's the perfect word. So anyway, a lot of people are are in my business and but they're not as as open as I am many many times. They will lean over to me after during commercial break and they'll go, "I'm praying for you, sister." Or I'm I was I heard you the other day on on whatever and you were talking about Jesus and I thought, "Oh, thank you, Lord, bless her." But they don't you know, and right. so I just, since then, I've just prayed for them that they would be more and more yeah. open about their faith because, the, you know, Jesus said, if you, if you don't stand up for me, you know, I have to then go and, and stand before the Father on your behalf. I want Jesus going over to the Father and saying, she was good. She, she, she didn't miss an opportunity. She opened her mouth. In fact, <laughs> even too much. Even too much for me. Slow um, down, <laughs> Kath. Slow down. <laughs> you, um, well, again, it gets to what I was saying when I was first introducing you here is that, that that's what I've always valued about you because that's something that God's put on my heart, that we have to, in a sense, pioneer a public stance what does it mean to be a Christian in public life? It doesn't mean talking about Jesus every second. No. But at the same time, it means when the opportunity arises, you know, not hiding it. And you know what? Was it Augustine who said, you know, preach the gospel at all times, but when necessary, use I words. I think that was Oscar Wilde. No. Or, you know, no, soupy <laughs> sales. I always get them confused. I always get them confused. But the point is well taken. If you're not, don't talk about it if, you're, if your life is not going to be evidence of it. You know, because that's not going to help the, the kingdom of heaven. That's not going to advance his cause, right. which is to, you know, the gospel, mean, gospel means good news. 
good news is that God loves us and he loves everybody he's created. And his whole shtick um, is to bring all of humankind back to the to Bet Av, the Father's house. That's you're we, throwing in some of those Jewish terms. Yes, Bet Av. Bet Av, the Father's house. I thought seeing it so Bet El is the, is God's house. Yes, but Bet Av. Bet Av is the Father. Is the Father's the house. Father's house. 